So, um, so thank you for that. Uh, I'm gonna pray. We're gonna read the second half of Philippians, okay? Rich did a wonderful job last, uh, last Sunday talking about um, suffering and joy, fire and glory. And, um, and we're gonna continue right with Paul's thought because it's his one continual thought with Paul. We're gonna pick up right where, right where he left off Okay, so if you have a Bible, you can open up to Philippians 2. I'm going to be reading from a few different translations. I like the New American Standard, but also the NIV. And, um, and we're going to have a good time this morning. So we're going to wrap this up so I can let you get back to your busy, awesome days that you have planned to enjoy uh, whatever you want to do today um, with celebration in your heart. So we'll, we'll, we'll make this, you know relatively short. We'll see. But let me, let me, let me pray again and uh, ask the Lord to really touch our hearts through his word, okay? So Father, right now, do that. God, touch each and every heart and release uh, an imprint of your spirit on our hearts. I pray that, that we would feel it in the depths of our being, that your word would resound in us and, and that ears right now be opened I pray ears be open to hear and receive the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Mm. All right. So we are gonna sing still. Don't think I forgot. We're gonna sing together, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna start by recapping uh, where we left off last week. Philippians 2. So Paul is writing Philippians under quarantine, under house arrest. And I, I've shared this now when I first started this series. It's just awesome. I was, I, I was having a conversation with Kelly about this book uh, of Philippians. And this was like two months ago. I felt like I wanted to get into this book. And now it's like more appropriate than ever doing it, not realizing at the time that, wow, we would be under a real type of house arrest. 95% of the country right now is under uh, some form of a lockdown. It's crazy. And half of the world... Uh, over three to four billion people. It's wild. Um, so Paul was under his own house arrest. He could still have visitors. There was still an, uh, an ability for him to preach the gospel. And he had his own Facebook Live going on um, in his own way. But, um, but, you know, he was in a similar spot. And he, in the midst of this spot, he released some of the greatest wisdom that he learned in his life of walking with Jesus. And we get to experience that. We get to glean from his life, from his wisdom. You get to tap into that. You get to receive that for your life, okay? So don't be just a spectator today. Don't just be, you know, mindlessly scrolling through Facebook. Like, tune in right now, okay? Let go of other distractions. Tune your heart in. Really listen, because there's wisdom for your life that God wants to speak and to release. So, uh, so last week, we read where it says that Jesus humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. And Rich just... Uh, beautifully unpacked that love of Jesus, that self-giving love that was poured out at the cross and all the joy that came out of his suffering and how we're called to endure. God doesn't want us to suffer, but suffering's part of this world. And so we're called to endure it, knowing that there's joy in the midst of it. And so it says that, I'm picking up right in verse nine, um, from the New American Standard, it says, for this reason, God highly exalted him. Jesus, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow of those who are in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is is Lord. That is a promise of scripture, that there is going to be a worldwide bowing, surrendering to Jesus. And listen, Jesus doesn't take slaves. He doesn't take robots, okay? Jesus gave his life for us on the cross to demonstrate his love for us, that we would return to him willingly. So when people bow the knee to God, what God is looking for is a bowed knee of a heart that is surrendered to him because of love, not because you're forced to or because he's threatening you with punishment. It's because he's saying, this is how much I love you. I suffered here at the cross 
for you to come and be uh, one with God again. And um, I, I just, I need to put this out there, you know, for, for people watching this, because I know we have a lot of people watching live and I know many more people will see this during the week. Um, if you haven't bowed the knee to Jesus, if you haven't confessed him as Lord in your life, this is the time, this is the day of salvation. This is the invitation to you in this moment. There is a lot of soul searching going on right now. There's a lot of, 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 uh, of things that are going on in our hearts. Going through any crisis brings out deep stuff in your heart, but being confined to your home and not being able to do things like, you know, I mean, think about all the major things that are shut down uh, in this virus situation, movies and sports and restaurants and all the major things that, that, that people fill their time with and pour money into, they're just shut down. And um, this is a time where we're really invited to soul search. Now, while this coronavirus thing is going on, alcohol and marijuana has uh, spiked in sales like crazy. And of course, internet and, and Netflix and Disney Plus and all that stuff, all that watching has increased. And so certainly, you know, there's a lot of time being spent to not soul search. And this isn't, you know, condemnation on, you know, having, using media or whatever, but, but I, my prayer is that we would not allow ourselves to be consumed by these things, but that you would actually allow yourself to feel the uncomfortableness of this moment and, and, and really allow God to speak to you in the quiet, in the boredom, okay? Um, allow God to minister to you in this time. If you're watching this and you really, you haven't bowed your knee to Jesus, Okay, I don't mean that you, you know, you attend church every once in a while or you say a prayer every once in a while. I mean that you, you, have, you have surrendered your life to Jesus, okay? I'm talking about a real surrender that you've said, Lord, my life is yours. If you haven't done that, I want to invite you into that today, today. We're going to pray at the end of this for everyone watching. Um, I want to call you into that relationship with Jesus. In October of 2005, I finally experience what it means to bow the knee to Jesus. And it completely, it changed everything. People thought I went crazy when I went back to West Milford because I was away uh, for a season in college. Uh, people didn't believe it. There was a lot of skeptics, uh, but they saw the change in my life. They saw what Jesus did and, and, and I have experienced his glory and his grace in such incredible ways um, but there, there was a real surrender. There was a real uh, saying yes to Jesus. I am confessing you as Lord, like the master, the commander of my ship. I want you to take, to take charge. So I wanna invite you into that, okay? Um, I know the Lord is speaking to people right now. He's calling people closer to himself. In the um, quick story, in the months before I really bowed the knee to Jesus, there was there were little things happening that I realized in hindsight. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. Okay, we're in a year of twenty twenty hindsight, getting new vision even on our past. That's a side note for you. Um, but in hindsight, now I, I remember these things that happened in the months leading up to October two thousand five. Um, there was uh, there were just little signs from God. Like, I mean, I'm talking very little, like they were whispers. Like it was like this Bob Marley song that came on the radio one day at the perfect time, the redemption song, the Bob Marley's redemption song. Even God can use anything to speak to. He used that song in my heart. One thing that happened was a movie I went to, a horror movie called The Exorcism of Emily Rose. I don't know if anybody has seen this movie. I don't know if I'd recommend this thing. It's pretty freaky. I'm not a fan of exorcist kind of movies. Um, this one was, this one was pretty intense, uh, and it came out in September of 2005. And, uh, it was actually a very, it, it, the, the directors really wanted to challenge people's faith in the movie, uh, through the movie. There was, they, they actually wanted to use this to help people to open up to the idea of God. And I was just going as a, you know, this 18 year old, just, you know, watching some random horror movie. But in that, me sitting in that theater, I had no idea that God was actually speaking to me. And there's this scene at the very end because this girl, Emily Rose, it's based on a true story, actually. She had a different name. I think it was Annalicia Marie or something like that. Uh, this girl died in the midst of, of a deliverance session, exorcism and all this stuff. 
And it has to do with a trial, a court case over that failed exorcism. And, uh, and the movie um, ends with her gravesite that her parents, you know, put a plot out for her. And on the grave uh, of this girl who, who had this, actually had this beautiful faith uh, towards God, but unfortunately experienced a lot of darkness in her life. But, but over the graves, on the gravestone, they wrote, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So that's what the movie closed with. That's the scene closed with work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And I saw that. And it just hit me. I, I didn't understand it at the time, but something hit me. And that's actually from Philippians 2, that statement. And that's actually where we're going next. So I'm going to keep going in, this, in, the, in the passage, um, but I do want to invite people today, make this Easter Sunday a, a, a life-changing uh, time of really surrendering your heart to Jesus. We'll talk about that at the end more. So Paul goes on talks about Jesus' suffering, all right? Everybody's still with me? I don't see your faces, so it's, it's hard to know. Verse 12, so then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you to will and to act according to his good pleasure. All right, you're still with me. There's a, there's a lag in the technology, but I'm seeing all the responses now. Awesome. Um, so this verse really bothered me for a lot of years, especially when I started to open up to this message of grace, the grace of God. Um, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That was always a tough tough passage, but he just talked about what Jesus did for us on the cross. Every knee is going to bow and confess and then he says, therefore, in light of all of this, okay, everything that we've talked about so far, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Um, as I began to just seek God for insight and wisdom into that passage, what does that really mean? Is that, is that like a works gospel? Is this like, like we have to work out our, we have to work for our salvation and we gotta be afraid? Like I thought God doesn't, he says, don't fear, um, be at peace, be at joy. Like what, is, what does that really mean? And I started to get some insight I want to share with you. And I actually, I want to um, read from someone who wrote uh, a little more in depth about this uh, in a book called The Happy Gospel. We read this as a church, I don't know, um, maybe seven years ago now. We went through this book, The Happy Gospel, and uh, it's an awesome, awesome book. Um, but in this book, uh, the author, Ben Dunn, he, uh, he talks about this verse. And he talks about how when Jesus suffered for us on the cross, okay, we were included in that suffering. Like we actually were there, even though we didn't feel it, we didn't see it. It was by grace. It was a, uh, it was a spiritual transaction. You were there. When he died, you died. Your sin died. And so when the scriptures talk about denying yourself, Okay, because Jesus said, deny yourself. We often teach that. A lot of churches, a lot of, you know, a lot of the Christian literature out there teaches that as like this self-effort thing. Like you have to deny all of your wants, all of your pleasures, all good things, bad things, whatever it is. Like you just got to deny, deny, deny. And it makes it more into a work. But really, when you look at the full picture of what Jesus did, he took you into himself at the cross. Not just a part of you. He took all of you, all of your sin and the scriptures tell us that when he died, you died. You were crucified with him. You were buried. Your old identity was buried. So when the scriptures say to deny yourself, that actually means to lose sight of that old sinful self. Lose sight of it. Don't empower it with your focus anymore. Okay, if you have bowed the knee to Jesus, you've been baptized in him. It says in the book of Romans that that, that sinful nature is gone. It's buried. So lose sight of yourself. Now, in this book, Ben Dunn writes about this and he talks about it and he's like, okay, but he says, let yourself be eclipsed by the glory of the cross. Lose sight of your own achievements. Even lose sight of your own ability to be holy, to be good. You can't do it. Lose sight of yourself and focus on Jesus. So, okay. So then he says this. Pay attention here. He says, you might be asking, Aren't we supposed to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, right? To quote Paul, Philippians 2. 
He says, here, read this verse from the Arthur S. Way translation. So Arthur S. Way was a scholar who went into the Greek uh, texture of the words and put it into some upgraded language for us to understand Paul's message. And this is how Arthur S. Way translated Philippians 2, verse 13. He said, work out with fear and self-distrust. I, with trembling self-distrust, your own salvation, because you do not have to do it in your own unaided strength. It is God who is all the while in you supplying the impulse. In order to understand work out your salvation with fear and trembling, you have to understand the next verse that says, for it's God in you. When it says to work out your salvation, it's saying that you already have salvation. Okay, you, again, you've bowed the knee to Jesus. You've received, said yes to him. Like that salvation has come. You are, what does salvation mean? It means you are saved from sin. You're saved from punishment, fear, all that stuff. It's done. But now God wants that to be worked out. It's like inside of us, like a seed. And that seed has to get watered. But it says to don't, don't work it out with your own efforts. Be careful. That's where the fear and trembling is. Like, be afraid to put your own works into this, to make it about you again. Because he says, for God is in you. You get the connection to the next verse? It says, for God is in you. God is at work in you to will and to act. So God is the one who will give you the desire and the ability to walk in his goodness. I can testify to this in so many areas of my life, like that time in 2005, when I surrendered to God, like I had so many addictions. I had so many things wrong in my life and certain things I tried to overcome many times by discipline, by doing, um, I don't know, like 40 day things, like all kinds of stuff. And it just, it didn't work because my heart wasn't changed. You know, if your heart's not changed, you can try to do all this exterior stuff and it doesn't matter. But in October 25, 2005, my heart changed. From the inside out, I opened up to Jesus and all of a sudden it was like instantaneous. I was set free from drug abuse, from pornography, from all these things that were running my consciousness, my mind, all this stuff. God, I just experienced this release, this incredible flow. And that's what the Lord does for us. He gives us the ability and the power to overcome. And what, what we have to remember, what I have to remember still now in my journey is like, there's more of that salvation he wants to work out. There's more things in my life to this day that I want to see victory in, but I can't go back to works. We can't go back to striving and, and, and putting the focus on ourselves. It always starts and ends with Jesus because he is the author and finisher of our faith. And guess what? He writes the middle part too. <laughs> he does the whole thing. So it's God who is in you. He calls them to remember this. And look look at what he says. Look at what Ben Dunn writes. He says, Paul wrote this during his Roman imprisonment. You know that. He was awaiting possible death, knowing that he might never return to his beloved Philippian church, his most generous supporter, he lovingly tells them that they must not rely upon him any longer, but that they must trust in the impulse of God within them. The apostle was essentially teaching them to drink from the source of salvation, not just from the messenger of it. So Paul's like, look, you have been feeding off of me, my influence uh, in your life. You've been feeding off of leadership, but it's time for you to feed on the God who is within you. You have the great pastor, the great shepherd inside of you already. You have access to wisdom. You have access to, to strength. You have access to joy. And he calls them, work this great salvation out by continuing to look away to Jesus and what he's done at the cross. I hope that's clear. I hope God gives you a fresh revelation of his grace. There is no growth in the Christian life apart from grace. A lot of people think that grace gives people a license to sin. It's actually the law that gives people the license to sin. The law empowers people in sin. It causes you to focus on your sin. Grace, it says, sets you free. Grace leads you into godliness and righteousness. So may God bring you into an understanding of his 
grace for you, his love for you, that is what is gonna continue to give you victory and call you to continue to work out your salvation in your life even more. There are greater testimonies ahead for all of us. Amen? Amen? Air, air five? Okay. I gotta keep going here. That's like the jewel for me of, of, this, of this passage, but, but I didn't even get to the title of this message. Um, Paul goes on. He's still kind of summing up his thoughts. Thank you, Jesus. So he says, okay, God is at work within you. And then he says, do everything without complaining or arguing. <laughs> so you wanna know what it looks like to work out your salvation? What it looks like to have God within you coming forth? It says you're gonna complain and argue less in your life. <laughs> That's a sign of, of God's grace manifesting in you. Do everything without complaining or arguing. Paul was so locked into relationship. That was so important for him. And he said, so that, verse 15, so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I might boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor for nothing. Paul's heart here, he's saying, I, you, all of you, all of you watching this, all of you listening to this, all the, the recipients of this letter back then, but the recipients of this message today, you are called to shine like stars in a black night of fear and chaos, when there's a night over the earth, when the earth goes through crisis, the church is called to shine like stars in the night. Peter writes in his letter that the morning star is Jesus, the first star to shine in the night sky signaling the morning. The, the morning star is Jesus and the morning star, he says, is rising even now in your heart. Christ is in you. Jesus Christ, God, is in you to will, to give you the desire to work. He wants to empower you with fresh faith today to know that you have everything you need and that morning star is going to rise more and more. That's what it means to work out your salvation with fear and trembling self-distrust, with awe towards God, another translation says. That as that salvation comes out, you begin to shine more and more as a bright light in the midst of darkness. And the scriptures give this awesome promise to those who, who shine in, in times of darkness. It says that the nations are gonna come to your rising. The nations, it says kings are gonna come. There are gonna be people who get drawn to you as you rise with Jesus Christ, as he rises in you and you begin to walk in the fruit of love, first and foremost, that's the number one fruit of the spirit. And then there's all other kinds of things that flow out of our union with Christ. There's peace and joy. There's, there's power and miracles, all kinds of things. But as that love, first and foremost, as that comes out of you, it says the nations are gonna be drawn to our, our, our light because we're gonna shine like stars in the universe. It's beautiful. God is, God in right now, understand something. Get, let me give you some context for what's going on in the world right now. There is a divine setup going on there is a black backdrop of darkness and all kinds of things that is being prepared for night stars to erupt and shine like never before. And you are part of that. You are included in that. I don't care how far away you feel from the power of God in your life. He wants to give you that grace. He is right here ready to empower you as you just stop striving, look away from yourself, look to God, look to that smile on his face. He's gonna flood you with light. He's gonna bless you and keep you. So he goes on and he says, he's just talking personal now to them. Um, and he goes on in the rest of this chapter, you know, uh, he, he's gonna talk about Timothy and Epaphroditus, two friends of his, two ministers. I'm actually not gonna really read that part. I encourage you to go back and read this yourself during the week. But Paul just gives this beautiful you know, um, uh, exhortation for them to honor those who labor in the Lord and, and to, um, to welcome those who labor, this one guy who almost died for the work of Christ. And, uh, and he just, you just see Paul's heart for people, individual people uh, in the end of Philippians 2. But I wanna come back to this verse about shining like stars. 
It says, as you hold out the word of life, okay, you are called to hold out this word, this word of truth and hope, the gospel. And he says, in order that I might boast that I didn't run or labor for nothing. He's like, it's your turn to run. I am fading out now. It's time for you to rise up and shine. And he says, even if I am being poured out, verse 17, like a drink offering on the sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I'm glad and I rejoice with all of you. So you too should be glad and rejoice with me. Now, that's, a, that's an important uh, statement that Paul wrote in his letter. He said, even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering, uh, that has to do with Old Testament offerings where they would actually pour out liquor. <laughs> They'd pour out, it says liquor actually in Deuteronomy or wine, wine and liquor. They'd pour out uh, an offering to God. And Paul is saying, I am, I'm like wine. I'm pouring out my life for you. And even if I get completely poured out, meaning even if I die, like all I want is for you to shine. All I want is for you to experience the salvation that's already been implanted into your heart. The word that's been implanted, it says in the book of James, that word of life said that's in you. It's been implanted in you. So Paul wants them to take that word out, to let it shine, all that stuff. He's saying, now is the time. There's there's crisis in the world. There's crisis around you. Now is the time to let it shine. And even if I die, so this brings us back to Paul's Paul's surrender. We talked about this in the beginning and we talked about surrender further last week. But this, this, this brought Paul such peace and contentment that he said, look, even if I don't make it out of here, he believed he, he, he would and he did make it out. So he hoped, he, he hoped for breakthrough, but he came to a place of peace. And he said, even if I die, it doesn't matter. Like I've, I've surrendered because Jesus is risen. Jesus is alive. There's nothing to fear in life or death. I gain either way. That was the secret of his contentment and his peace. I want to close with, with, uh, with something related to that. Okay. Um, and this is from something I shared, uh, in a, in a message five years ago, a little over five years ago, I, I gave this message called all shall be well at church in 2015. And in 2015, I, I had this sense that there was this economic storm that was coming and I thought it had to do with a virus. And I actually talked about that, but I was thinking it had to do with a computer virus. And I even said that in the sermon. You can go and watch this on our YouTube channel. We don't go back that far on our app for those of you who have our app, but it's all archived on our YouTube channel. You can go back to January, 2015 under the videos and, and watch this. And um, because I really had this sense that there was this virus coming and I thought, I thought it was gonna be a computer virus. I was probably, I don't know. I, I, you, you hear things from God and you can misinterpret. We only see in part. And I think I really jumped the gun like five years early. I, I, I need to work on that, on, on how, I, how I communicate what I'm hearing from the Lord in the moment. Um, but I gave this message because I felt like there was this big storm coming to the nations and it was gonna do with this virus. And I talked about this woman, Julian of Norwich, who lived during the Black Death. And I gave this whole message on this and she was the one who came to this place of surrender and this place of peace and she got this word from God, even in the midst of the black plague when people said the world's ending. Okay, this was a hundred times, no, thousand times worse than the coronavirus. Okay, this was half of Europe's population dead. This was, people were saying there was earthquakes going on. People were saying this is the end, this is the end. This is it, little did they know, 700 years of human history and Renaissance and Reformation and babies and new life and joy and revival and all kinds of stuff would happen. They thought it was the end and, 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 and that wasn't, it wasn't the end. And God came to this woman, Julian of Norwich and said, listen, all is gonna be well and all will be well and all manner of things will be well. And I shared in this message about a book that I had read, this whole thing of how God you know, was speaking this to me all the way back in 2014. Um, this book by Ray Bradbury called Something Wicked, This Way Comes. And, um, and in that book, there's this wicked carnival that comes into town and it's this carnival represents all of our fears, like everything that wants to come and destroy us. And there's this witch at this carnival and she attacks the main character in this story, uh, his father, this, this, this boy's father gets attacked and this witch whispers into his ear and she says, your heart is bad. You're, you're, you're getting a heart attack right now. Your, your breath is is decreasing, your lungs are collapsing, you're, you're, you're getting anxious, right? Like she's whispering into him and he starts to get anxiety. He starts to, 
His heart starts to race. His lungs start to, start to contract and, and he, he can't breathe. And he, he's like, I'm going to die. And he's so nervous and fearful because he's listening to the voice of this witch. This witch is telling him, you are going to die. You're going to die. Everything's going to fall apart, right? And he's, he's receiving that word into himself. And he's about to die, but there is this moment, and, and Ray Bradbury is such a brilliant writer, the way, that he, the way that he brings this all out, just almost poetically, he comes to this place of surrender, this man. He, he has this flashback of his life, and he just, he, he realizes the absurdity of, of fearing death. And all of a sudden, he's like, wait a minute, what am I worried about? What's so bad about this? And when he comes to this place of surrender, all of a sudden, the spell breaks because he starts to laugh. He starts laughing and his laughter ends up pushing the power of this witch away. She ends up dying later on in the book, not to spoil it for you, but there's, you know, the old parlor trick of shooting, pretending to shoot a gun in the person's mouth. They catch the bullet and they do this trick with the witch, but somebody puts a smiley face on the bullet. And she thinks she's going to make it out okay, but the bullet now has a smiley face. It now has a symbol of joy and laughter, and that's what takes out the witch. So listen, don't receive the voice of the enemy into your heart right now. Receive that same revelation in this season. When things seem to be closing around you, when anxiety comes in, when things begin to, be, begin to overwhelm you, there is a voice of peace, beloved. There's a voice of truth that wants to cause you to just let go and trust that, you know what? My father is good and all is gonna be well. All will be well and all manner of things will be well. Listen, there's gonna be a renaissance after this coronavirus. I just wanna say that boldly, put it on the record, put it on YouTube, okay? Just like there was a renaissance after the Black Death, there's gonna be a renaissance after this. There are plans God has for your grandchildren. And I pray that God gives you that faith and that courage. But listen, all of that stuff is the cherry on the top. The, the real joy that we have is that relationship with God and the relationships in our lives and that love that he wants to bring to us. That's how we shine. So I wanna leave you all with that. I wanna bless you with that and, um, and just invite you to really turn your heart to Jesus right now. What does it look like for you to bow the knee to Jesus? Take a moment and think about that. Ask God, what does that mean for me to bow my knee to Jesus? Like, show me, God. Show me what that looks like. Lead me into that surrender. There is peace on the other side of your surrender. And if you haven't surrendered to Jesus Christ at all, listen to me, now is the time to do that. Now is the day, today is the day. There is an amazing future ahead of us, but time is still short. Today is the day to find his love, to find his peace, to find his grace for victory, real victory in your life. So I wanna pray for you right now. I wanna pray that you take in that love and just join me in prayer right now, okay? If you're feeling me, if you're, if you're with me right now, join me as I pray to Jesus. Join me in spirit. Lord, I surrender to you. I wanna bow my knee to you being Lord, Lord of my life. I want you to take the reins. I want your grace to run the show. I want you, Jesus, to reveal your power, the power of your cross to me personally. Jesus, I choose today to surrender to you. I say yes to your gospel. I say that I can't do this on my own. I need you so much. I need you desperately, Lord. So let your grace come. Lord, I pray this personally for myself. As your grace came to me in 20, in 2005, let your grace continue to come upon me and bring more of your salvation in my life. God, and I pray for those who haven't experienced your salvation at all, that they would open up their hearts and receive it this Easter Sunday, 2020, in their own homes. Father, flood people's homes right now with your peace. Give them joy. Guide them into your truth. 
And thank you, God, that we're gonna shine. We are rising as stars. We're gonna shine like never before. So we thank you, Father. We love you. We bless you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, if you're, if you're really like receiving this for the first time in your life, please reach out to someone. Um, earlier we had um, Rich shared uh, about our elder team. They have um, an email. You can email our elder team at the church and I know they would love to reach out to you and connect with you if you're looking to find that relationship with God for the first time. So elders at awakenj.com. Uh, please, you know, reach out. There's probably someone here right on Facebook that you can, you can connect with um, that knows the Lord, okay? Let, let your confession be loud, okay? You have to confess openly with your mouth. That's, that's so important, okay? So if you're finding Jesus really in your home today, please reach out, okay? And, um, and Kai, don't worry, we are gonna sing, my friend. We're, we're singing Amazing Grace. I have not forgotten. So, um, so I wanna just bless you all and, and thank you for joining us. We're gonna have an awesome day today, wherever you are. And uh, I wanna sing Amazing Grace right now. So I want you to join me and I want you to sing this out loud, okay? I wanna hear you from over here in Green Pond, okay? I wanna, I wanna hear the choirs of angels right now. So just turn your heart to Jesus, okay? Um, right now in your house, wherever you're watching this, just lift up your heart to him right now. Let's praise him together. Let's magnify Jesus. He's alive. He is alive and risen. He is good. He is so good. He is your shepherd and savior. He's coming into your home with salvation and fire and glory. He's releasing his hope. He's awakening you to grace right now. Just lift up your heart to him. Lift up a hand to him, okay? Just lift up... Uh, your sound to him right now. Let's give him praise together. Let's show hell that no quarantine, no virus can silence the sound of the saints, the worship of the saints. The gospel's gonna go forward. It's gonna increase like never before. Go ahead, just begin to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Whatever comes out from your heart, let it bubble forth. If you pray in the spirit, begin to pray in the spirit. Begin to worship the lamb of God in your home right now. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We praise your name. We magnify you, Jesus. Your grace is enough. Lord, your grace is enough. Your grace is sufficient. Your grace is so good. <laughs> Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your sweet grace. Thank you, Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. T'was grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. I love this next verse. Through many dangers, toils and snares, we have all 
already come. T'was grace that brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. When we've been there, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first begun. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I am found. Was blind, but now I see. Jesus, we say that as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will cling to your grace. We will discover it and unwrap it for ourselves like never before. We'll shine, Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, may everyone right now feel the comfort of your Holy Spirit, your fellowship, and may you continue to bring forth the true unity and love that you are calling for in this hour. We thank you for all of these things. Thank you for bringing us together today, for allowing this time, God, that we could still connect like this. We love you, Father, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, I see uh, Eileen Schott has put out the uh, prayer chain requests. So she has her email there, um, Eileen Schott, uh, eps1 at optonline.net. Thank you, Eileen and everyone else who's keeping the prayer chain going. And... Um, and uh, continuing to hold each other up. Thank you for all of those who are just reaching out to one another and continuing to be engaged and all of that. Um, we love you guys. And uh, like Rich said, there'll be a service uh, next week, same time, same place on Facebook. And we'll keep, uh, we'll keep you know, waiting on the Lord for his direction and looking uh, at the authorities that God has placed over us as well um, for the wisdom. And we need to pray for wisdom for them in terms of uh, opening up the, uh, the country and gathering together again and all that kind of stuff. So um, Jesus is so good. Happy, happy Easter, happy Resurrection Day to you and your families. Bless you, bless you guys in Jesus' name.